Hello, Mr. Rido. Okay, we will start at the news. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. What are we doing? So let me just okay. see if I can say share screen, to mm -hmm. monitor screen, don't show tips, share screen, and then I can share a whole window, share. Okay, is it good on is your this end? sharing? Just a second. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 So, uh, hello guys. Uh, today, for the workshop, we have Mr. Vito, uh, the CEO and founder of All Art, which is a hyper casual game that is built using Unity Sui Wallet uh, as a backbone. So, uh, just to briefly introduce, we have um, Jaden, which is the head of faculty of VBI and also the co founder of the newly opened Open EDU 101 website. And me, my name is Dick Ein. Uh, today, I'm going to be the host as well as the translator for you. So if there is uh, any problem, you guys can text me in the chat and I'll take a look at it. Uh, alongside with Vito, we have Dijan. Uh, D Dijan. Dijan. <laughs> Dijan. <laughs> Dijan Dan. <laughs> Dijan Dan. <laughs> um, which is Mr. Vito's uh, assistant, or so should I call it. Um, and so, uh, Mr. Vito, you can take it away. Hello, everyone. So, um, so glad that we are together on, on this uh, small workshop. Uh, so maybe I can uh, do a brief introduction on um, all art, myself, Dejan, and, and the rest of the team. So my name is Vito Mirivremovic, but you can call me Vito. It's sure and easier to remember. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of All Art. Uh, all Art is a let's say a collective of builders. Uh, we are a, a protocol. We started on Solana. Uh, blockchain, but we then we expanded our portfolio of product, uh, and we are now also uh, building on Sui blockchain. Um, we've been winners of the first uh, Sui hackathon. Actually, it's been uh, kind of a grand um, agenda on their first builder house in Portugal two years ago, where we got a grant to build uh, Unity Sui wallet. So we created Unity Sui wallet. We released it publicly, and it's a complete open source solution. Uh, to build games or, or other applications in Unity. And what has happened recently is that we won the second grant uh, with Swing Foundation to build an open source game uh, using Unity Sui Wallet. So it's kind of a demonstration of Unity uh, Sui Wallet, but also uh, it is a completely uh, independent, let's say, game uh, that runs on Sui blockchain and it can showcase, uh, the, first of all, speed and the cost effectiveness of Sui, but also integration with, with our Unity Sui wallet. So also the, the game is open source, <clears throat> which means that people can, can freely download the game, modify the game, publish their own game based on the game that, that we will present today. And uh, of course, they can extend the functionalities, build their own games uh, uh, on top of that. Uh, what is interesting is that we used Unity Sui Wallet as the backbone of game creation, which means that most of the features of the, of the game, actually the game screen and all the communication with, with the chain is done through Unity Sui Wallet, which we will demonstrate today. On the call with us today, on the workshop today, is Dan, Dan Gnatovic. Uh, he's our lead developer on Sui blockchain. And uh, we are now, um, yeah, we are very happy to, to show you what we have created. This is the first time that this goes live. So this is kind of a premiere of, of the game. So no one knows what it is. We will, we will show it today. We will play the game for the audience. And what is also interesting is that we are, uh, thinking of releasing the game also as a fully playable version on App Store and, and Google Play. But that will probably wait for a couple of more days or weeks because we want to see, first of all, how community reacts on, on this uh, open source project. And then we will probably uh, wrap it up and pack it up to be a fully, fully playable game on the App Store. So without further ado, uh, uh, let me first share my screen and explain you how the project is structured. 
uh, how the wallet is used inside of the project and so on. So let me share a screen. Entire screen. I'll share entire screen and then I will just go through there. So when you see it, let's hope that we get it. Yeah, do we see it? It's always fun to see these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nested screens. So anyway, um, I'll jump to the project. Um, can you see uh, my Unity screen? Yeah, we see it. Yeah. Okay. So um, the game uh, is named Sukso. Um, it's a hyper casual game based on um, a version of the PC game called Sonics uh, that was released, you know, in some 80s, 1980s, something like that. I played it myself when I was a kid uh, and I enjoyed it very much. So we, we thought that it, it would be a great, great way to showcase, uh, you know, possibilities of SUI blockchain and, and connection with, with the wallet. So, um, Let's see uh, first the structure of, of the project. So we integrated, uh, we started by integrating uh, the wallet itself uh, inside of the project and started building actually from the wallet. So you can see here, uh, we have uh, what we call a prefab in Unity, which is a prefabricated game object with all the components of the wallet inside. And uh, you can see it. Uh, here, it is the same uh, Unity free prefab that exists in um, uh, Unity SUI wallet uh, repo. And I'll show you how we added the repo. So what we did is in package manager, uh, sorry, when I go to in project, um, you can see here that we have all our Unity SUI wallet uh, integrated. So it's a local repository from the disk so how do you add that is that you basically clone the repository from uh, from the github and i'll show you this so you basically go here and you search for uh unity so we wallet and then what you will do is you will basically um, clone this this repository and uh, have it in a separate uh, project and then uh, you will just add that inside of the project through the package manager and you will say just add packages from disk and then you will just you know select uh, uh, the project and, and add um, the unity suite wallet so you start from there then you import samples which are uh, here in this pro in, in this folder so uh, this is a, a kind of uh -huh. excuse me mr vito uh yes. so you can talk slowly down so a little bit uh we uh -huh. can just like with the vitamins or everyone uh -huh. okay yeah sorry so uh then you will <clears throat> import the samples folder this is a default functionality of unity sui wallet and as you import uh, unity sui wallet uh, samples this is the actual implementation of all the wallet functionalities here where you have uh, these prefabs that you can then drag drop into the scene um, <clears throat> so uh, into the scene now we go back into the scene you see the prefab of a wallet here and then when you open up uh, the prefab you can see all the screens that exist inside of the wallet so i will turn off the game screen <clears throat> and i will just uh, open up, let's say, the main screen of a wallet, and you will see how how the wallet looks like. Uh, usually, there are so many different screens, from from the splash screen to you know the the intro page to you know every screen in the wallet basically is presented here in this holder uh, uh, game object. So when we go to <clears throat> a gaming screen, uh, what is interesting here is that we use uh, Unity Sui Wallet to actually manage uh, the main game screen of a game. So we added a game screen here that then has the logo, that has you know, the headers, uh, subheaders, you know, and landing uh, screen of uh, the game. And then of course also, maybe I can turn this off and then show you game over uh, 
screen and then also congratulations screen. So what is what is cool with this is that we are using the wallet screen manager to actually activate additional screen that is now part of the wallet. So the, the gaming experience actually becomes a wallet experience. And it's inside, as I said, inside of the wallet holder. Um, what we also did is we moved notifications outside of the holder because once the game starts, this holder actually it disappears, which means that notifications that we have can uh, exist um, outside of the main holder game object. So I'll, I'll turn on the holder again. And what I would like to do is um, show you the game, uh, how it is played, and then talk about a little bit about the game mechanics, uh, how the coins are created, how the extra lives are, are done. And I will show you that through playing of the game itself. And as you can see here, we have uh, Suity as the um, the logo. And during the workshop, I'll actually change that into Suxo logo, and that, just to show you how easy it is to brand your your new game uh, just by by modifying the wallet. So um, there is now create a new wallet, or, or I already have a wallet. You can create a new wallet. You can create a password. It will be one, two, three. And then, of course, I read terms and conditions. Yes, I save my secret recovery phrase. Actually, maybe I can even save it for real. Let me see if I can do this. Uh, Vito, I think you forgot to enable a level screen in, in, a, uh -huh. okay. in, in a wallet. OK, I'll do that. Uh, anyway, yeah. Maybe that is why it is asking me for a new wallet. You are right. Okay, let's do the play. Okay. Mm. And I save and continue. So what happens now is that we don't have enough SUI. Uh, so we need to top up the wallet uh, and, uh, you know, uh, do an airdrop of SUI. So in this uh, version of the wallet, we integrated airdrop feature inside of the wallet so that when you go here and you go to settings, you first of all need to change the network to DevNet. Uh, and then excuse me, excuse me. Can, can, can yeah. you speak low? Can you speak lower. slower? Yeah, uh, yes. we can. We need to just like stand something by sentence for for uh -huh. use everyone. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. yeah, uh, method and we'll change like center sentence so you can talk uh, lower and shorter. But, okay, yeah, so. We need to then change the network to DevNet in order to uh, play the game. You can also, uh, once we deploy uh, the contracts on the mainnet, you will be able to play on the mainnet. For now, the contracts are deployed on the DevNet. So we go to uh, change the network to DevNet and do an airdrop. Uh, so you see request is successful. It can take up to one minute to receive uh, this, we go back to the wallet. Actually, we received, as you can see, the player was created and we have uh, Swiss in the wallet now. Uh, so when we uh, start the game, uh, player object is created on chain and we are able to play the game. We have zero coins and zero extra lives. But you can see, based on the number of Swiss that we have in the wallet, that a transaction was created to um, basically create a player. Now, when we are here, uh, we can uh, play the first level because cost to play is zero coins, or we call it zero soups. Um, and then as we play the game, we earn coins that we can then use to uh, play uh, levels, further levels. So every level has reward coins and it has bonus coins. 
bonus coins are um, reward coins. Sorry, are uh, uh, um, let's say received once you complete the level, and bonus coins are received based on how well do you complete the level in the sense of how how big is the game field uh, that that you actually cut and i will show you this so let's play the game and show you how the game actually works and looks like um, um Vito, before we jump yeah. into that there's a question saying won't we need the back end for unity app in this case uh, no. Uh, so we developed the game so that uh, the full game can be played without the backend. So the idea was to showcase how the game can communicate between blockchain directly from the Unity and game interface. But for some security reasons, uh, in the future, of course, or, or game developers should think about uh, creating a backend for the game. But this game demonstrates uh, using Unity uh, blockchain directly through the game itself. Yeah, can I jump in just quickly? Uh, yes. Uh, so essentially, yes. Uh, if you want to build a production ready game, yeah, it, it's completely, I would say, uh, necessary to have uh, a backend. But uh, uh, as Vito already said, this this game is just like a showcase of how to communicate with the with the uh, Sui blockchain through the wallet. Uh, some things has to be uh, on the back end, you know, just in 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 uh, security sense. Okay, so um, we we will talk about uh, uh, the way that that the game is communicating with the chain uh, in in few moments. Uh, let's just now uh, go back to the the gameplay and see how it actually works. As you can see, I completed the the level one uh, that requires no no coins to play, and I received uh, seventeen coins by completing the level, fifteen reward coins, and two additional bonus coins. Then I can use these coins uh, to uh, basically uh, spend them or to burn them and to play some other level. So in order to play a level number two, uh, uh, that would cost me uh, 10 uh, suksos and I would need to, to spend these 10 suksos to um, play the game, uh, to play that level. But what I can also do is I can again play the level one that cost me nothing and uh, get more uh, coins rewarded. So I will play one more, uh, one more iteration. And so cool, I completed the level. So the level is completed when you um, basically cut or or uh, you know cover uh, seventy five percent of the game gameplay field. So as you can see now, I have thirty three coins and uh, more levels are uh, open for me to play. So I can play now. Let's say I play level two. And um, so I spent my tokens and I can, well, okay, I died. So once you try this, you will see that it feels easy, but you know, on, on later levels, it becomes quite hard. So, okay, let me, Okay, I died. So uh, game over uh, for me. Uh, as you can see, I have 23 coins because I spent 10 coins on uh, playing the level two. So I can continue, I can uh, uh, buy extra life or I can restart so I can buy extra life. And uh, buying extra life costs you 10 uh, suksus. So, uh, just a second, sorry. Um, so I now got um, one extra life, so I can basically continue where where I left off. Oh, sorry, I oh, know I started from the beginning. I think we have some bug in the game, but anyway, the the idea was that you can then continue where you where you started where you left off. Uh, so let me. Okay. Okay. I still have my my extra life. Um, 
So um, now I can uh, yeah play play some other level. I mean, you can see how difficult, for example, level six is. It's almost impossible to play with so many enemies. And then when you when you die, you can now uh, use this extra life uh, to actually continue uh, the game. As you can see, so this works well. But anyway, I die. Uh, I don't have any any tokens to buy extra life, so I, I cannot I cannot uh, buy an extra life. So I can just uh, continue with with going back to the beginning and and playing from the start. So anytime you are in in the green game screen, you can access um, uh, the wallet screen. As you can see now, I have uh, two score points that are created uh you know like wh whenever i play the game i can actually show you that how that reflects on the game screen in just a second and if i go here you will see that i have 19 uh, score points and by going to 19 score points you can literally send these score points to some other player or receive score uh, score tokens from from some other player so there is uh, uh an interesting uh, let's say way to to monetize uh playing of the game if someone is successful the other uh, players need uh coins to buy extra lives to continue to to receive more rewards and so on so um this is how the maybe i can also buy an extra life here to show you how this works go here then you have one life and one score um so this is um how the game looks and works and now um maybe i can just go in into um the um, the scripts that we used so the folder called scripts um has the scripts that are used inside of the game and you can see here that we have enemy controller uh, game assembly, game manager, game overlay, game state manager, game view. But the main, uh, let's say, scripts that are controlling the game uh, are, of course, game manager, script that is attached to game manager, uh, game object. And then we have the grid manager that um, controls the grid, which means that it takes care of everything that is going on inside of the grid. I will open up the source code for the game. So maybe you can see here that uh, the game was first named Suixo, but we renamed it to Suxo. So anyway, here are the assets, here are the scripts. And then you can see these are very simple uh, uh, scripts and really not complicated to understand. Uh, if uh, the audience has any uh, questions regarding uh, how the game actually works, uh, we can go into this, but I think um, like literally a half an hour analysis of the scripts can show you, you know, how the, the game works in, in the front end, meaning like in the Unity itself. Um, then we have, you know, the, the game overlay that controls uh, on player update, game state manager, we just control the state. This is very simple, nothing too complicated. Uh, the, then the game view um, and, you know, like level, uh, models, player uh, controller. This script, for example, controls uh, swipes of the, of the player, how to control the player, up, uh, update movement direction and, and things like that. You see uh, on trigger enter 2D, kill player, handle cell interaction and spy controller and enemy controllers, uh, they control uh, we call spies these things that are um, <clears throat> black ones that are going around you and chasing you, and enemies are uh, shurikens inside uh, of the game. Gameplay excuse field. me, Peter Vito. Mm -hmm. uh, mm, this uh, the the code uh, path, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to just lay the sentence by sentence for everyone because this is a hot path for mm. for the user for for the viewer. Yeah, uh, we need to just like sentence by sentence about the, the technical. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. you can um, talk shorter 
for just like can job for me to click on change case later. Uh, yeah. Okay. Can you go back to the uh, open source code and then I can briefly introduce everybody in Vietnamese. Yes. Um, uh, với mọi người thì đây là cái phần source code của cái game này. Thì ở cái phần source code này thì uh, anh Vito đang chỉ cho mọi người tất cả những cái mục bao gồm đó là uh, game manager, grid managers hay là về phần level spy controllers thì bản thân cái game này nó sẽ trở thành open source uh, later on so mọi người có thể access những phần này để xem vào những cái phần code uh, cụ thể hơn. Uh, cụ thể hơn thì về chi tiết thì uh, anh Vũ anh có thể giúp em giải thích về chi tiết về cái phần uh, phần phần open source này được không ạ? À, cái phần này thì tí nữa thì uh, à, đến từng cái chi tiết từng phần đó thì uh, Vũ sẽ nói nhé tại vì hiện tại đang overview thôi à, còn về overview code thì sau cái buổi live stream này thì mình sẽ có cái open source thì mọi người có thể đọc à, Vũ sẽ gửi lại cái, cái link nhé ok 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 uh, ok yeah you can continue yes uh... So we will publish the uh, GitHub repo today after the workshop. Uh, we will upload everything so that you can uh, you can you know just uh, download the game, play the game, uh, and and of course experiment with with everything. Um, I, I don't think that that it is necessary now at this moment to go literally script by script and explain everything how it works. As I said, it's it's quite. Uh, for any Unity developer, it would be quite easy to understand uh, how these things work. What is uh, here important is to emphasize connection between the game and the wallet. And the game and the wallet connection is done through the game screen. Uh, so uh, this is the game view script, as you can see here. And I will go here to show you. So this is the, the game view screen uh, that actually um, handles uh, the game view. And these congratulations screens, landing screen, and uh, game over screen. So when you go here and you go to these screens that are in, in a separate folder, which is landing screen, uh, game over screen, and congrats screen, you can see functionalities for each of these screens where you can see, you know, render levels. This is what uh, takes all the levels that can be played and renders it inside of this scrollable uh, object. And then uh, game over screen handles a game over state and uh, congratulations screens handles congratulations. <clears throat> As I mentioned, Earlier, this is super small. These scripts are super small. They're made to be uh, easily readable. All the um, variable names are made to be easily understandable. So you can see here, it's reward text, bonus text. You can see how, how it is all structured and created. Uh, camera setup uh, screen is actually not there, not used, so we can even delete it. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, maybe uh, not. Uh -huh. Yeah, can I translate for for the user or for the viewer? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, um, thì nãy giờ yeah. này để, để nói luôn được. Vâng. Ok. Thì nãy giờ bên uh, Mr. Vito có nói về cái vấn đề là cái course này thì uh, mình sẽ không cần phải giải thích khá, uh, quá chi tiết về từng phương sạch tại vì những khá, cái course này là khá là basis cho hầu hết tất cả các bạn. Nếu như các bạn là uh, một Unity developer thì các bạn có thể dễ dàng đọc được nó. Thì uh, tí nữa thì Vũ sẽ hỏi cho mọi người về cái chỗ mà mình sẽ integrate với lại là cái mobile suit như thế nào uh, Thì để mọi người có thể dễ hiểu hơn Thì ở trong đây thì uh, hiện tại là Mr. Vito có show cho mọi người ba cái screen Mà khi mình integrate với lại là thì Mình mình sẽ có là cái con contrast screen And uh, game over screen và landing screen Thì cái phần này nó cũng khá là đơn giản Thì uh, nếu như bạn nào mà biết Unity Mình có thể đọc sơ qua nhé Uh, ở trong đây mình sẽ có convention thì tí nữa phụ sẽ xem thử là cái cách mà mình integrate giữa uh, cái community này với lại là bên uh, Swift thì nó như thế nào nhé. Uh, ok, uh, you can continue. Ok, um, so if you search the repo for go to, 
these are this is the um, the function from the wallet that actually uh, goes to a specific screen of the wallet and what i want to show you here is where we um, change the wallet to actually allow people when they log in to directly go to game screen so in the wallet you have an uh, normally you would do this so on the after the the this creation success screen you will go to main screen of the wallet but we said okay now we will not go to main screen of the wallet but we will go to game screen of the wallet and in the repo you can search this go to and see where we actually go to the game screen as you can see we change this in the login screen so after the login instead of going to main screen we go to the game screen um, and in you know you can see that the, the rest is unchanged so this is important when people are developing a game using unity sui wallet that they can use the backend of the wallet to actually create their game screens and put uh, yeah, them yeah, yeah. inside of the holder yeah you, you can make the code before i can just lay it mm -hmm. and you can make the, the, the VS code yeah uh yeah, à, thì uh, hồi nãy uh, uh, Mr. Vito có nói với người là khi mọi người lên trên cái sử dụng cái VS Code đã đăng để xem code ấy, thì người ta tìm cái go to này thì phần này nó sẽ có rất là nhiều những function liên quan tới việc là connect wallet. Thì mọi người thấy một vài function ở đây liên quan tới lại là wallet events và cái wallet component. Thì sau khi bắt được cái sự kiện gì đó thì mình sẽ có cái sự kiện là go to some screen và mình sẽ có game screen hay là side screen thì khi mọi người nhìn vào đây mọi người thấy được là cái code của wallet component để có thể đi tới ví dụ như ở đây là cái continue này mình sẽ có là cái inun or omt là khi mình có nếu xem tưởng là cái wallet component nó có nó có cái dữ liệu hay không nó có bắt buộc hay không thì ở trong đây thì nó sẽ có được là cái dữ liệu lock cái wallet đã lock in hay chưa nếu lock in rồi thì nó sẽ lock in screen à, nếu nếu chưa thì nó sẽ là go to lock in screen còn nếu rồi thì nó sẽ chuyển qua game screen à, thì đó là những gì mà mr vito uh, nói ok uh, you can continue yes so yeah. that go to game screen actually activates game screen here so main yeah. screen remains here and if i turn it off you can see that uh, when it's floating over the game screen so we are now after the login we are not going to main screen we are actually going directly to the game screen and when i start the game you can see that yeah and yeah, this is the login screen. That's for this one, two, three. And then it goes directly to the game screen instead of the main screen. Um, so maybe now we can switch to Dayan. Uh, so Dayan can uh, tell you more about how the chain integration works and show you the code of uh, the, um, uh, our um, you know, contract that are on the chain and how the game is actually uh, communicating with with these contracts directly on chain so i will stop sharing and we can switch to them yeah. yeah give me a second just uh, okay let me start sharing my screen uh, ship screen Entire screen. Okay. Let me know, guys, if you if you see my screen. Uh, maybe uh, maybe I I I I have some question from the user. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. I, I I can ask. Yeah. Uh, do uh, do your project is it on Google Play Store? No, not yet. It it will be hopefully we yeah. will we will re release it publicly. But we are getting ready actually to dive into the you know this process with Apple and with Google uh, for the approval of uh, you know a blockchain game. So we yeah. think that there will be some you know, issues there probably you know like uh, with all all of their procedures uh, concerning blockchain things, uh, and we will see. I mean we will keep the community informed. 
of how it is going and they can join our you know discord and maybe telegram or whatever we can start the conversation and and just do you know a follow-up as we make every step along the way applying to google play applying to app store we want to actually share our experiences when we do that uh, but yeah. we first want to shoot out the game uh, to you know the, the community and to the public to test it out to maybe comment a little bit about whether everything is going well is it working well and then we can start the procedure of applying and then we can follow up the applying and then we can all play the game together yeah uh, wait uh so the, the next question uh, can i revert engineer this app then treat the get free coins can you repeat the question uh can i revert engineer this app uh then cheat to get free coins free coins <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah yeah that is that is the um the interesting thing this is exactly what what we want to um put out there for community to experiment and we will experiment too uh, i think this will be a fun thing uh, because if we increase uh, the amount of rewards per level uh, then you know the the tokens that you can win every time you play uh, the game uh, on on the level that that is free to play uh, then you can you can stack the coins basically you're mining tokens not mining coins uh, but what is interesting is that the, the big rewards sh should start we just for now we created you know a, let's say a linear uh, uh, type of rewards per level but we can do an exponential curve of the rewards so that uh, actually the best rewards are later on the more uh, more difficult levels so basically you know the the players that want to spend a lot of time to mine the tokens by playing a first level they can then probably you know um put uh, uh coins in in some liquidity pools and enable people to buy those coins so they can buy extra lives uh, the full potential of this game uh probably will be developed in the in the future not only by us probably by by other members of the community uh by in introducing some power-ups uh, and uh, our plan is to build power-ups as nfts so that people can buy these power-ups or win these power-ups by, by playing the game. Uh, and then these power-ups become a reason or utility uh, why people will use the tokens to buy these power-ups. So probably there will be people that are playing the game to win the coins uh, so they can sell them, or people will be playing the game to just you know uh, uh, um, enjoy the game itself because it can be also played like that. Um, so um, yeah. If that answers the question yeah i see uh one more question uh, where where is the user private key stored uh user private keys are stored locally on on the wallet uh so it's not shared publicly anywhere <clears throat> it is used to to sign transactions uh with, with, yeah. within the game when when the game so we don't have a backend uh, for a reason uh and that reason is because we don't want to uh, uh give any um you know still we, we we want to kind of burden the system with three uh, parts of the system actually four one part is the front end where you know the unity game is and then a wallet below it and then you know uh contracts on chain and then we want to introduce the back end at this moment but the back end is something that we can discuss at the end of of the workshop and and talk about the security issues of of having a blockchain game that that could be hacked let's say so yeah i see uh so i did all the question by now uh, you can continue the next part yeah mm, okay uh did i see my screen uh i think i shared okay. Yeah, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me just zoom up, zoom in a little bit. Okay. So, uh, what Mr. Vito didn't mention is essentially this is the uh, SUI networking uh, class, and uh, th this is basically uh, something that that works with with the blockchain. So, the complete game uh, communicates with the blockchain through functions declared in, in a SUI networking class. As you may see, like creating player, 
increase, increasing player score, redeem lives, use life, and so on. And uh, ju just to go back on, on the on the question, uh, can can users force to to receive a lot of score coins currently? Yes. And that is why I emphasized at the beginning that essentially in the production, you, you would want to, to have a, a, a backend. Essentially, backend should uh, track uh, do players uh, trying to cheat or something else. And then the backend should decide when to, to mint coins to the, to the correct wallets of the players, right? But as this is a workshop, you know, uh, we, we just didn't, didn't uh, uh, Bother uh, uh, about that complexity, you know, because yeah, I, I think it would be hard to to uh, go through everything in a, in a one hour. Why you know you have a backend and why it should be built in the way it's built, you know. Yeah. So I, this is this, can you yeah. can you explain one function in here uh, step by step for for, for one function for yeah, just I'm only sure. one function, yeah. I, and you can I'm explain sure. explain, explain. The, uh, yeah explain the function just only one function for oh, 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 can, any function yeah, yeah 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 sure for instance let's say create player right uh as you see uh it, it uh, expects expects a couple of arguments some of them are uh have default values like a game id game package and the rpc client uh all those things are declared here uh, and this is something all these addresses uh, you are getting when you publishing your package uh, i mean sui package a smart contract yeah. right uh and this is the code that uh creates essentially requests for a, a transaction programmable transaction block right and we are saying that uh, we, are, we, are, we are signing with this wallet. We are going to use this package. This is the uh, model name. And what function we want to trigger on this specific model, right? Uh, and here, uh, essentially, what we are doing, we are pass passing up parameters to, to create player function, right? Uh, once this packed, we uh calling a JSON RPC, uh, SUI JSON RPC that will essentially prepare our transaction, right? After that, we, we are signing this transaction with our uh, wallet, okay? And uh, finally, we are submitting a transaction to execute on blockchain, and that's it, you know. Yeah, and we, okay. you have I, uh... what? Uh, yeah, yeah, you I want can to translate for, for yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, uh, okay. Thì ở đây uh, anh Dijon có nói cho mình là một cái phần sản của việc create một player ở trên uh, có một cái phần sản là create player trên cái con chat. Thì uh, nếu như các bạn đã học về Swift Move ở trong khóa của thầy rồi thì mình sẽ biết một cái định nghĩa đó là cái game ID uh, và cái package game package thì nó đều là những cái package khi mà các bạn deploy một cái Uh, con chat đúng không? thì uh, cái phần sản của mình nó sẽ bao gồm là uh, wallet thì cái wallet này là một cái định nghĩa bên trên à, cái gì? can you show me the wallet uh, the the shop of the wallet uh, you mean wallet yeah. this is the wallet yeah yeah uh, đây là cái wallet của bên uh, phía script bên phía bên phía bên là cái package của um, cái package của Unity SDK thì cái dùng cái cái này nó có thể cho các bạn là việc quỳ ai cũng như là update cái wallet à yeah you can go back à, yeah go so back. yeah uh, yeah so uh, wallet is essentially something that you get when you when you log in uh, yeah. so basically uh, 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 your wallet is stored on your device as encrypted yeah. thing you know and once you enter the password uh, when when you start the game this is the moment when when we read The, the stuff from, from your device, uh, encrypt them and use them as a ball, you know? Yeah. So we, we don't uh, ask, ask uh, 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 any time uh, uh, after that, uh, like for a password or, or so on. Yeah, you know, I see it. Just the beginning. Uh, 
wallet mà anh đi dành có nói ấy, là cái wallet mà mình sẽ mình sẽ định nghĩa khi mà user họ login vào cái platform của mình thì ở đây mình có thể giúp cho họ là định nghĩa sẵn luôn một cái wallet là mình sẽ dùng wallet nào hoặc là mình có thể là choose uh, someone uh, choose something thì cái uh, cái prem thứ hai của mình là cái game id thì cái game id mà khi các bạn tạo ra một package thì mình sẽ có được là cái id của cái khi các bạn tạo ra một cái cái game id là cái id của cái cái game đó khi mà các bạn gọi một function đó và một cái object thì mình sẽ có một cái id của một object đó à, cái package là khi mình deploy cái con chat thì chúng ta sẽ có được là cái package uh, cái package là cái đó là cái trong cái trên digital blockchain đó thì đó chính là cái con chat và cái obc cái obc là mình sẽ dùng cái obc client là mình sẽ kết nối với lại cái cái mục nào ở đây thì mình sẽ có dev Đấy, uh, thì uh, các version bên dưới là cái client thì mình sẽ gọi đến cái o, uh, GBC client đó thì là cái OBC client đó là mình sẽ gọi đến cái DevNet và mình gọi cái move call là mình call một cái version thì call version ở đây thì mình sẽ dùng wallet mà mình vừa mới sử dụng nó uh, wallet thì mình định nghĩ phía trên nó cái thứ hai là cái tickets là cái địa chỉ của contract uh, cái thứ ba là cái game thì đó chính là cái module cái module của cái contract của, của cái package đó thì trong một cái package nó sẽ có một cái module uh, và cái tiếp theo là mình sẽ có là create player create player là function của cái uh, của cái của cái module đó ở trong cái module đấy thì ở trong cái một cái module nó sẽ có nhiều cái function thì đó chỉ là cái mà các bạn thì các bạn gọi về cái new string và new object là hai cái hai cái uh, arguments mà các bạn chuyển vào và cái số cuối cùng đó là khoảng 10 triệu ở đây thì đó chính là cái uh, gas mà các bạn phải trả phí uh, sau đó thì mình sẽ validate và gửi một cái request lên trên uh, ptp uh, ptp này là cái uh, obc call của uh, swiss và mình sẽ call một cái function là cái này thì thầy có dạy cho các bạn rồi đó là program maple jason blocks là cái nó sẽ thực thi một cái chuỗi các cái sự kiện con trong một cái phong trắc nó sẽ được chuỗi các cái jason nhé và tiếp theo là ký à, và cuối cùng là thực thi nó bằng clan sql jason block và ghép với report bằng ready ptp response và cast nếu trong trường hợp bị lỗi À, thì uh, người thắc mắc thì vừa cái đặt câu hỏi ở phần này nhé. Uh, ok, anh Duyên có chia sẻ vậy. Yeah, uh, also I would like to emphasize that essentially this SUI networking class is just a, some kind of wrapper around the SUI RPC client, uh, and all all functionalities that are used in this uh, SUI networking class are essentially declared in a in a SUI RPC client, you know, like uh, sending requests uh getting balances essentially this rpc client is used by a wallet itself so when you start developing a game you essentially already have like uh i would say most of it that you will ever need like you see uh, receiving the objects get own own the objects uh total supply i don't know uh and also also just a second also uh, a move call which is really important because uh, uh, you know uh, if you're gonna start building your game you will have some uh, your functionalities uh, your modules you know it, it's it's really essential you, you cannot build the game and uh, without the the calling a move functions on your smart smart contract right? yeah so this is this is uh, 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 everything is done through uh, SUI RPC client, which is currently communicated with the uh, J in a, in a JSON format. Uh, yeah. We are planning to upgrade it to uh, to the Graph uh, QL. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thì anh Mr. Dijan có nói với mình là cái SUI RPC client này nó chính là cái package mà nó sẽ định nghĩa hầu hết các convention ở trong cái uh, khi mà các bạn tương tác với lại cái RPC của SUI thì trong này mình sẽ có rất nhiều những function liên quan tới việc gọi call hay là query các cái event cũng như là uh, thực thi cái transaction thì hầu hết các function nó được định nghĩa trong cái uh, OBC class này thì cái phần code phần này chắc là mọi người sẽ đọc tại vì nó sẽ có rất nhiều những cái function ở trong đây thì mọi người thấy là có hơn 200 dòng hơn 200 dòng khoảng tầm 500 dòng ở đây thì nó sẽ có rất nhiều những function uh, thì cái phần này nó cũng khá tương đồng với các cái function mà mình sẽ mà mình sẽ gọi ở trong class tương tác với lại phone đó thì nó cũng sẽ khá là giống nó còn bao gồm mấy cái như là move call rồi uh, execute transaction thì uh, cũng như là query trên blocks thì đó sẽ là những cái mà mọi người sử dụng khá là nhiều trong việc entry với lại là for date. Ok, you can continue. Ok, and let's jump on the 
on the move code itself. Okay, just zoom in a little bit. Okay, so the, the, the main model is a game model, right? And this is where uh, admin capabilities are declared. Game structure that you're essentially, when you, when you want to load the game, uh, all levels are stored uh, in, a, in a game object. Okay. Uh, also, you may notice that I have a, like a level here, uh, life, player, and the score. Uh, they are separate models, but they don't have too much functionalities, except, you know, for instance, uh, score model just have an init function and a mint function, where uh, in init function, we are essentially creating currency, right? Yeah. For this score. They want to translate or should I continue? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ở đây thì anh um, Mr. Dijon có chia sẻ với người về cái code của cái um, game này. Thì ở đây chúng ta có admin cap. Thì cái này nếu như mình cần học bài của thầy thì chắc cũng khá là khá là rõ rồi. Admin cap này thì nó sẽ tạo ra để uh, cho một người đó sở hữu cái quyền admin. Uh, cái thứ hai là về cái cái game score này. Cái game score này thì nó sẽ là cái score của các bạn giống như là các bạn đang uh, cái score nhưng mà ở đây thì anh đi trình có sử dụng là cái score này nó tương tự như là một cái token thì ở đây là mình sử dụng coin là create currency à, và sử dụng cái là score thì cái này nó cũng sẽ tương tự như là cái uh, cái việc các bạn create một cái token thôi à, thì uh, sau đó thì mình sẽ có hai cái object được sinh ra là free chi object và share object thì hiện nay nó chính là hai cái score cap và score metadata ok you can continue it. Okay, and uh, for anybody uh, thinking about the security, this is alarm here, uh, actually here, because as you may notice, score cap capabilities are public, uh, public uh, shared object, right? So anyone, anyone can use it. Yeah. And, you know, th th this is why essentially you, have, you need to have a backend, you know, where uh, your backend would have a keys that uh that have a score capability objects on you know for mm -hmm. instance uh, you will have wallet on your back end that is the owner of score capability and only uh that wallet can mint mint uh, uh score coins right yeah. now any any anyone can mint you know this is yeah. why uh because you cannot have uh like a uh keys in your game you know because at the end someone can unpack essentially your game and install the keys so you you need to, to hold them somewhere securely and this is the back end you know yeah uh, ở đây thì Mr. Dijon có chia sẻ với người là hai cái vấn đề về security các bạn sẽ không cần quan tâm quá nhiều về security của việc của Swiss ở đây thì mình sẽ có hai cái object được sinh ra là public free chain object và safe object thì uh, lý do tại sao mà cái uh, game này không cần nó in là tại vì nó có khả năng store cái cái store cái score cap này bằng cách là sử dụng cái xe object là everyone can call it uh, là mọi người đều có thể call đến cái cái xe object này thì việc là nếu như các bạn đủ cái yêu cầu ví dụ là các bạn min thì các bạn sẽ cần phải yêu cầu cái gì đó và sử dụng cái xe object này để min thêm một cái lượng score mới mà không cần phải sự can thiệp của một cái key nào đó ở bắt in thì đối với cái blockchain khác thì các bạn muốn gọi được cái việc minh ra như thế này thì các bạn sẽ đa phần là các bạn sẽ cần cái, cái một cái key nào đó ở blockchain để khi mà uh, người ta gọi tới thì mình sử dụng key đó để để thực thi nhưng mà trong trường hợp đó thì nếu mình mất cái key thì mình sẽ gặp vấn đề vấn đề rủi ro liên quan đến security thì uh, đó là cái vấn đề về security của cái phần này ok you can continue yeah for example if you if you take a look on this init function right it it uh, uh, it drops this admin capability to transfers admin capability to the sender so someone who initialized the complete package right and as you may notice here when we try to add the level we require admin capability so essentially only admin ad, admin can, can add additional levels or or I don't know, remove levels uh, and work with the levels. I mean, essentially, 
adding them, removing them, adding enemies, you know, man manage, manage uh, levels itself. So this is something you would essentially want here also, you know, so you, you would not uh, publicly share a score capability object, but also transfer to, to someone who initialized the package. So only only the the uh, initializer of the package would be able to to mint coins and so on. Also, uh, as it has here, you know, uh, yeah. on, only only uh, oh that God. initializer can add levels, remove levels, and so on. Yeah. Uh, let me just lay. Mm -hmm. uh, ở đây thì uh, mint Dijon có chia sẻ với người là cái khi mà mọi người deploy cái contract thì chúng ta sẽ có thêm một cái min cap mà hồi nãy thầy có nhắc tới rồi đúng không? thì cái min cap này thì mình sẽ trên transfer cho cái người mà gọi ra cái function init này là người deploy ấy, là mình sẽ có cái test contest về người một cái sender và mình chuyển về cái init đó là contest ở thì hiện tại thì ở thì hiện tại đó là cái người mà gọi function init này là người deploy đó thì sau khi deploy xong thì cái min cap này là do cái người mà deploy nó sở hữu thì bất kỳ một function nào mà các bạn cần quyền truy cập của admin thì các bạn sẽ truyền cái admin cap này vào giống như là function add level đối với add level thì các bạn thấy một cái field đó là admin cap thì đây nó sẽ tham chiếu tới lại cái admin cap này và các bạn bắt buộc phải sở hữu cái admin cap này các bạn mới có thể sử dụng cái version add level này thì điều này nó sẽ giúp cho mình có thể là chặn thêm một cái uh, mình có thể là open nó cho admin và cái convention ví dụ như là uh, remove cái level đi hoặc là về một level đây thì mình cũng sẽ uh, sẽ cần cái 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 app này, okay? Yeah, so uh, uh, also I would like to 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 uh, emphasize the the thing about the entry uh, add-on for the function declaration. So uh, you can explore, of course, the the um, SUI documentation. It's really good. You can find everything you need there. So uh, entry functions are essentially functions that are can be called from the uh, transaction itself, you know. You but they cannot be called to, uh, from other packages. You know, for that you you will need to uh, declare your function as public, right? Public functions can be called from transaction and also from other other models or packages. Uh, Okay, and yeah, uh, yeah the different of the the different of the entry function and public function is the entry function can call from the user from client, right? And the public function just only call from the other in include the module and other module, right? Yeah, other friend module. As you, uh, yeah, as you may see, you you can find it in the documentation. It's yeah, re really described uh, as it should. Okay, uh, and everything else is essentially uh, what you need in, in your game. It's it's up on your game and uh, your game mechanics. Uh, as you may see, this is a function essentially that uh, uh, our game uh, triggers every time when when you start to play level, except the play play uh, uh, except the level one because it doesn't cost to play. Uh, as you may see, you, you need to provide like a couple of parameters: yeah. uh, game, player object, level number, score coins. Uh, th this score coins are essentially a vector of uh, score coins for a particular wallet and score capability, right? So let me show you quickly how this looks like uh, in the uh c sharp uh where is c sharp now okay close it sorry just a second let me find it <laughs> yeah around the way uh okay so while then uh, there you go. Uh, uh -huh. okay yeah okay I Here just wanted to to add uh, a little little spice on uh, the topic of of cheating and and the backend. So essentially, our our mission here was to show how we are communicating with the chain, set up the game on the chain, 
and have the game communicate with the chain uh, to have these functionalities of, of tokens and, and uh, basically buying the playing of, of, of the next level with, with tokens. Uh, in, in the case of what Dan mentioned with the necessity of a backend, if the backend role will come in the middle of these two, uh, uh, you know, let's say, um, uh, packs of, of code. Uh, so you place the, the backend in the middle, and then the backend will need to check whether the player is cheating. And every game has its own way to check whether the player is cheating, whether it will be to kind of a replay a level, uh, to have some, some major things that happen in a game uh, to be transmitted to uh, the backend, and then the backend will check that and then call. Uh, the chain for for specific actions when the level is completed. Uh, so this is where we see the um, the role of the backend in the future uh, for all the games that that are played, especially for action games. So we deliberately uh, are, are chosen to to develop, uh, let's say, an action game, uh, meaning like a hyper casual action game, uh, while, for example. Uh, uh, games that are played by having um, um how do you call this a, a step every step not not step but um how do you call it? strategic games for example where you say okay i will play this in my next move uh then these games might not need a back end well the back end everything will happen actually on chain that's why for us it was important to demonstrate how you can call the chain from the unity even though it is a hyper casual action game yeah, I see it. Uh, the the game is a fully OG, right? Uh, uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Should I continue? Uh, so let me change lại. Mm -hmm. uh, ở đây thì uh, Mr. Vito có nói với người là cái game này đang là một cái game example thôi. Đó là basic, đó là hard casual. Nghĩa là giúp cho mọi người có thể hiểu ra cách vận hành của một cái game, một cách tạo tạo một cái game đơn giản chứ hiện tại là cái game này chưa tập trung nhiều vào vấn đề là security cũng như là cái vấn đề khác à, cái vấn đề thứ hai là cái vấn đề mà về security mà hồi nãy bạn Emily có hỏi là vấn đề liên quan tới việc là mình có thể revert cái engineer để mình có thể check để mình có thể hack được cái vấn đề liên quan tới là free coins thì ở đây thì uh, cái phần này thì nếu mà uh, đối với lại cái cái blockchain cũ ấy, thì mình sẽ cần phải sử dụng thêm backend để mình có thể là Uh, check ở backend trước trước khi mình gọi lên front trước kim loại front chain thì đối với lại cái game ở trên Swiss thì chúng ta sẽ không cần đến sử dụng cái backend làm cái làm cái middle ở giữa nữa mình sẽ không cần phải can thiệp ở giữa là bên thứ ba ở giữa để mình check cái vấn đề liên quan tới lại việc là nó có complete cái cái task này chưa complete cái level này chưa hay là nó có revert hay không hay là nó có check hay không thì đối với lại Swiss formu thì mình sẽ không cần phải sử dụng cái backend đó để mình check điều này mà tất cả mọi thứ đều có thể check được trên on chain thì nó sẽ là một cái game là fully on chain thì uh, đó là cái cách đó là cái mà điều mà anh Vito mới chia sẻ với người thì uh, ok uh, can you can continue okay so uh, as you, I already showed this is a play level uh, function and if if you notice the arguments here uh yeah uh, actually a uh, transaction context is something that is provided by the unity blockchain itself so every function that is called from from the uh, transaction will have this as i think the last parameter i'm not sure but it, it will be sure provided to the every function that that it has entry or you know that can be called from from the transaction uh so if you take a look the order of the parameters, right, is the same as you may, oops, you may see. Uh, here. So uh, in this in this object, we are passing all parameters that are expected, but by, by our function. And here is a game ID, player ID, level number. Score list is a list of coins. Uh, actually, yeah, list of coins, coin objects that are possessed by our particular wallet and score capability. So j just to to, to uh, explain to to everyone that uh, most used uh, part of, of the the whole thing here 
is essentially where you're gonna uh, put your your data that you want to provide to your function on the blockchain. Yeah. Uh, thì ở đây anh Mr. Jason có chia sẻ với mình một cái function ở uh, phía bên move thì mình sẽ định mình sẽ định nghĩa cái function player cái play level ở đây có một vài cái một vài cái parameter thì các parameter cities uh, là cái context là nó sẽ luôn, luôn nằm cuối đa phần nó sẽ luôn, luôn nằm cuối của cái function và hầu hết nó sẽ có mặt ở hầu hết tất cả các phần sàn có tương tác với blockchain có trên uh, thì ở đây thì mình sẽ có ngoài ra thì mình sẽ cần phải focus vào các cái parameter bên trước ở bên trước đó là game là player objects có level number hoặc là score coins và score cap thì các cái parameter này sẽ được truyền vào trong phần sàn ở bên C# sharp để kiếm kiếm như số mình được C# sharp code uh-huh. uh, sorry just a second uh, can you show me the C# sharp C# sharp yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Dạ, yeah. uh, ở đây thì phân sàn ở trên CSS này chúng ta sẽ có là cái player level ở đây Và mình vẫn sẽ truyền vào những cái dữ liệu cũ như là cái wallet, đúng không? Ok, MyD và package uh, Ngoài ra thì mình sẽ có thêm là cái level number mà sẽ được truyền từ bên ngoài Thì uh, cái phân sàn này thì mình cứ có nghĩa là thấy là cái new object ở đây Chúng ta sẽ cần truyền vào các parameter mà các bạn gọi bên phân sàn là play level Đó gọi là game ID nè, player ID nè, level number và score list thì cái score list là ở đây thì họ có thể lấy được từ cái score và convert all sang cái you know, two array cái thứ hai là cái score là mình cũng ghét từ trên cái cái score là cũng ghét từ phía on chain là mình dùng wallet và ghét cái score coin à, để mình truyền vào ở trong cái function này thì còn lại là function là level number sẽ được truyền vào từ bên ngoài thì à, đó là cái function mà cách hoạt động của function play level này và các bạn nhớ một cái điều là cái test Context, nó sẽ luôn nằm cuối ở phần dần move nhé. Yeah. Okay, you can continue it. Yeah, uh, and uh, as you may notice, in, in all other functions, it, there's the same pattern. Essentially, yeah. you're you're building the the uh, request for the move call, right? You're calling uh, uh, JSON RPC. It returns a uh, uh, parse transaction or this thing which you actually uh, uh, sign later you see it, it gets the transaction bytes essentially and this is how you execute and you may notice that except get methods everything else yeah. is it is the same pattern you know yeah yeah and uh, it's completely uh, uh, depends on uh, your game you know what 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 what's going to be game mechanics And yeah. that's it. I mean, uh, everything else. Uh, I, I I think it's it's really self-explanatory. You know, uh, with the help of SUI documentation, I think you will really easily figure out the code. I would say uh, I didn't know, uh, uh, didn't try the SUI uh, like for uh, two months before. You know, and I I learned it like uh, in a, in a couple of days weeks <laughs> so it, it shouldn't be easy for anyone to, to grasp grasp at, at the beginning you mean shouldn't be hard it's not hard <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah sorry it shouldn't be hard yeah it, it, it's pretty easy you know i i was really enjoying the the uh, uh, coding uh, using the sui move language <clears throat> so to yeah. um to add on that so basically what what we have now uh, there is a contract deployed on chain. Uh, we would just insert the backend in between the game and the chain, so that players instead of calling directly chain would call the backend, and then the backend would call the same contracts on chain or just a, a little, little bit modified contracts on chain uh, that would have additional security that only the um, you know the, the keys that are stored in the backend could actually modify things on chain. So um, that is for, for the future and also for the community because this demonstration is here just to give you a kind of an overview of how to use Unity SUI wallet to build a game uh, that can function at this moment. This game functions only on chain, uh, but in the future, you can of course develop it to function with your own backend uh, and to deploy that backend somewhere and then to, to have the game um, playable on chain but with with the backend yeah uh 
Mr. Vito có nói là vấn đề về việc uh, sử dụng tất cả phân sản này hiện tại đang được thực thi cho on-chain nhưng mà trong tương lai thì chúng ta có thể là implement thêm và thực thi nó ở dưới blockchain để chúng ta có thể tăng thêm vấn đề về security và cái, cái vấn đề về bảo mật của game cũng trải nghiệm của game. Yeah, uh, you can continue. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure is it too much to tell anything else, but uh, I would like just to mention uh, uh, one more thing. If you take closely look on the create player function. Uh, you will notice that we are checking is the sum player already exist, right? And for that, we're using uh, uh, tables. Essentially, when you create the player, uh, player address is stored uh, stored in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a game game players table, okay? And you can get, you can create only one player per, per game, essentially. Uh, that's a good a good thing. Uh, for instance, if you want to, to f uh, for example, if you want to have uh, only one player per game and you want to check his score, right? Uh, if you want to have some kind of uh, uh, leaderboards or stuff like that, you know, so it's a it's a good way to to be sure that there is uh, only one player possible per wallet. Of course, you can create additional wallet and create another player, but that would be another player, not, not the, the previous one, right? So maybe we can now go back to Unity uh, and maybe Deki, I can share a screen. I just want to show uh, sure. how easy it is to uh, change some of the things when you import the wallet and to uh, basically uh, change the, the look of, of the game that is using the wallet. So you basically take the wallet and use that as the front end uh, to the game. Uh, so let me share a screen again. So regarding this, uh, we do have a few questions in mind that we want to ask. Um, sure. And so one of the question is, uh, can you tell me why we should build games on the SUE protocol and what advantages SUE has in developing games over other blockchain? Yeah, so let me, I don't know if, is this sharing the screen? I don't see my screen shared. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Here it is. Um, and once you okay. finish, you can uh, stop and then I'll translate uh, whatever you Answer okay, to. so uh, I'll answer that that question just by showing you how uh, the game when it when it is played, how fast things happen. So here uh, we have the tokens. I'll play um, a level, and I'll just show you how quickly you know uh, tokens are updated. You see, it it just takes you know like literally. Uh, you know, half a second to update the token. So we think that uh, choosing SUI to build games on SUI, it's very beneficial, uh, first, because of the speed. And second thing is when you look at how much SUIs I spent uh, to demonstrate this, you can see that I spent literally 0 0.02 uh, uh, SUIs uh, to, to play the game. So this is a very small amount in, in let's say, dollars. And... Here, um, we can also discuss at this moment, we can discuss uh, one very interesting aspect and, and that is like who is paying for the transactions. So when we started this journey, we were thinking about whether the, the player should pay for the transactions or the game uh, or the let's say game provider or publisher should pay for transactions. Uh, Currently, the game is built so that player is paying for, for the transactions. But in the future, if uh, you know people want to develop games where they will subsidize or, let's say, um, give money for the transactions, either by uh, transferring some SUIs as kind of a marketing effort to bring in the new players or uh, to just have, uh, you know, uh, players, uh, uh, you know, sending the transactions, but... Uh, fees are covered by the publisher that can be done because the SUI is very cheap. Uh, 
And we think that this ability uh, to have a blockchain game that is you know, super fast and super cheap to play uh, brings in uh, the gaming experiences to next level. Because having this type of a game, which is an action game, playing like uh, multiple times uh, per you know an hour, you will play the, the level after level after level, sending transactions back and forth, uh, on some any other blockchain that that costs more than SUI is literally a suicide <laughs> for a game developer because this will just not happen. So I think that SUI is currently on on the let's say a top of the mind or the best blockchain to develop games on because of of the speed and because of of cost. And yeah, so yeah, and it's good. also also it's a uh, really object oriented. It's really, really uh, great to develop, especially with Unity that use C Sharp that is object oriented language. You know, when those two are combined, it's like a success. Yes. Okay. So, những gì anh Vito và anh Dejan vừa nói đó là về mặt lợi thế của Sui khi là một blockchain để develop game, ta để để phát triển game trên đấy thì một là nó có lợi thế về tốc độ là cái thứ hai cái mặt uh, chi phí của nó thì nó sẽ rẻ hơn so với các blockchain khác um, cộng với việc là bởi vì được uh, code game ở trên uh, Unity thế nên là um, cái ngôn ngữ của nó sẽ được more object oriented thì cái việc code game nó sẽ trở nên thuần túy hơn và nó sẽ dễ dàng hơn để onboard game ở trên cái nền tảng của Sui thì đấy là câu trả lời của anh Dijan và anh Vito uh, Um, the next uh, questions I want to ask is during uh, during the development of Saxo, how did you address the latency and the scalability issue of the project? Uh, well, we didn't experience any uh, any problems while developing uh, the game. Uh, we extensively uh, tested the game uh, both on mobile and on uh, on a computer, and to be really honest, we we didn't experience any any problems while while developing the game. Maybe then you can you can also um, answer, but I think the answer is the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, answer is the same because uh, transactions are executed on Sui like lightningly fast, you know. So in most in most cases, uh, it's fast like uh, your own backend, you know. I would say. But still, uh, you know, you, you can, I mean, maybe you can, uh, I cannot say because I'm not that much experienced with Sui, but uh, I will say that uh, it depends on the game, you know, everything depends. If you have some like a ultra fast multiplayer shooter, you know, you, obviously you would you would like to have a backend, you know, but if, if the, this uh, super casual game like this, maybe you can go even without backend, but for sure, response time for the trans transaction confirmation is like uh, super fast, you know. So while we are talking, what I'm doing is I'm changing uh, the visuals of the game and switching uh, from Sui, uh, Suity uh, wallet to actually Sukso. And you can see that, you know, this is super easy uh, anybody can can literally do it in in matter of of you know like seconds or minutes, and they can have their own game, just you know own visuals of the game, and and just change that directly in the wallet. So they don't need to develop all these screens, you know, secret recovery phases, create wallet, manage wallets, you know, like export private keys and things like that. They can do that directly inside of of uh, uh, Unity Sui wallet. So maybe you can also translate that. Can you translate? Huh? Uh, I think it's uh, pretty clear. Um, so, uh, cái anh Vito với anh Dijan làm vừa rồi đó là uh, thay đổi cái về mặt bề giao diện thì với cái lợi thế của coding ở trên Sui thì có thể thay đổi cái giao diện của cái game nó rất là nhanh. Vừa gần như là instant và có thể replace logo của uh, Sui Wallet với logo của Saxo Wallet trong khoảng thời gian rất là ngắn và đây là một trong những cái đặc điểm lợi thế khi code ở trên Unity cũng như là code ở trên Sui mà uh, khác so với các blockchain khác. Yeah, you can go ahead. 
Um, and uh, for now, I don't really have any questions. So, Mr. Jaden, uh, mm -hmm. do you have uh, further questions in mind? Mm, I do know. No. So what, uh, what I will do now, uh, sorry, uh, uh, what I wanted to do now is to deploy uh, this on a mobile uh, yeah. and to show you how that, that works. So um, I will build uh, the game now, uh, literally push build. So everything, I mean, the environment is, is already set up. So it, it will build the player in the Xcode and uh, place it on my phone. Uh, what is super cool with, with Xcode uh, now is that it, you don't need a cable <laughs> to, uh, to have it connected with the phone. So I'll start sharing and I'll show you the game that actually runs on the phone. And as you can see, uh, you know, I changed the, the logo of the game so that uh, I'll just enter. And you can see that I'm I'm playing it on on the mobile. You see, uh, I have already played, so I have some some coins inside. So I will play a level two, and you will see that uh -huh, yeah. So it plays, and on the mobile, uh, the interface is you know I swipe to change the direction of my player, and yeah, it runs smoothly. This is iPhone 15. Uh, so we also um, thought about the frame rates and, and things like that, optimizing uh, the, the frame rates for the game so that it runs smoothly on 120 frames per second. And you can see that too. Uh, it works here pretty nicely. And you can see that I finished the game and then my score also updated. So game does work on a mobile. It's not <laughs> only playing uh, you know, uh, uh, in, in Unity on the desktop. Uh, it's super easy to deploy on a mobile. So currently the default is iOS, uh, but you can of course uh, in Unity uh, switch it uh, easily to, to Android and build on Android. Uh, yeah, ở đây thì uh, Mr. Vito mới có giúp cho mọi người là có thể deploy cái cái con cái cái app này lên trên uh, App Store uh, để deploy nó thành một cái application chạy được trên app trên điện thoại. Thì uh, cái phần này là cái vấn đề về setup cái việc deploy thì anh Mr. Vito đã setup hết rồi, cho nên là chỉ có ấn play deploy thôi, ấn play deploy thôi. Thì có người đã thấy là cái, cái application của mình đã chạy được trên ở trên cái uh, iPhone và mọi thứ chạy khá là bực mà và sử dụng cái nước để có thể điều khiển được cái hướng đi của game thì đó là cái mức thời gian vừa mới chia sẻ với mọi người nhé. Uh, yeah, you uh, you can continue. Yeah. So after the the workshop, uh, then and I will open up the Git repo for the game and uh, for all the contracts and we will deploy everything and then what i would suggest is to follow our uh twitter profile i mean x profile all our protocol i will put it in the chat uh in, in the youtube uh, uh just follow follow us on x on our protocol so then you see when we publish the app. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so I would suggest. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I just wanted to suggest uh, to community and to all the people that uh, that are looking uh to you know uh once we we publish it they can download it they can try it out they can of course we are not perfect <laughs> you know like they can they can uh, comment they can uh, um, you know update the code they can they can uh, make push requests we will be sure to follow uh, the development of the git repo and the idea here is that that we experiment the whole point of of the project is to let the community experiment with um, um, 
very uh, simple uh, game mechanics that can be then extended to play around with how the chain is is linked to that and how the you know the tokens are um, minted to the players and how the economics of of these tokens can function within a game like this so the version that you see of the game right now will not be the the final version that we will publish to the stores uh, but definitely uh, is is let's say something that that community can can play around and, and experiment with. Uh, um, để nói với các bạn thì uh, đây là cái phiên bản nó cũng chưa được hoàn thiện thế nên đây chắc chắn không phải là phiên bản cuối cùng vậy thì khi uh, khi mà đã hoàn thành trong quá trình sản xuất và đã cập nhật thêm nhiều những cái tính năng nữa thì uh, bên Art bên Vito với anh Jira mới đẩy cái bản này lên là bản cuối cùng sử dụng thế nên hôm nay cũng chỉ là một cái phần workshop để demo qua sản phẩm và cho mọi người hiểu được cái cách code game ở trên Sui Bootcamp ở uh, trên Sui Blockchain là như thế nào Um, and Vua, is there anything uh, else according to the agenda? Uh, uh, when you will publish the GitHub uh, group? Yeah, soon. Literally, like we, when we finish now, this this is the what 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 we were thinking. Like, okay, we finish the everything, the demo, uh, and then we will open up the the GitHub, push the latest version of the game because I wanted to change the logo during the. Uh, the workshop yeah. and you know get everything prepared and then uh you know in the next couple of minutes hours i don't know like we will we'll see but we will definitely today like tonight in your in your time zone uh we will uh, you know publish the repo and uh, do follow us on on twitter and, and put the notifications on so that you can get the the feed as soon as we we publish we will we will uh, and publish the, the link to get there and then you will you will be able to to see the latest things yes yeah uh, and let's play yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i think uh that's it let's call it a wrap right I... yeah 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 so let's call it a wrap um thank you guys for joining in for tuning into the workshop uh please be sure to Follow uh, All Art on Twitter. Um, follow us, VBI Academy, on YouTube and all of our social medias. Um, the GitHub poll will be pushed uh, right now. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, have a good Have a good night, and I'll see you guys. Yeah. Bye. You. Thank you. Bye.